Hello, my name's James and I'm going to provide a brief tutorial on how to use the SX20 stop flow spectrometer which is supplied and manufactured by Applied Photophysics. The instrument is primarily used to acquire kinetic data on a millisecond to second time scale. The principle of operation is relatively simple. Two reagents are contained within two syringes which are then rapidly mixed together using a pneumatic drive ram. The resulting mixture is pushed through an optical cell which displaces the old contents into a stopped syringe. This causes the flow to stop and for data acquisition to commence. The progress of a reaction or molecular event that occurs as a result of mixing can then be monitored through spectroscopic methods. We can begin measuring reactions that are approximately one millisecond old. Typically, we want to measure changes in absorbance or fluorescence. To do this, we most commonly use a xenon arc lamp light source. We pass this light through a monochromator that allows us to select the particular wavelengths of light that we are interested in. Alternatively, for absorbance measurements, we have the option to measure all wavelengths simultaneously using a photodiode array detector. Usually the first thing we need to do is switch on the lamp, as this takes 20 minutes or so to stabilise. Make sure the shutter is in the open position. We then need to turn on the electronics rack and start the software. As the instrument relies upon pneumatics, it is essential to ensure the gas supply connected to the instrument is regulated to 8 bar. This is 120 psi. Often we wish to control the temperature at which we make our measurements. To do this, turn on the circulator and set the desired temperature. With particular circulators, this can be done within the ProData software. The temperature within the stop flow head is continuously measured by a thermocouple sensor and the measured temperature is displayed on the software main panel. The temperature at any time of any acquisition is always written into the data file. We need to select the mode that we will be working in. For this initial example, we shall make some absorbance measurements. We therefore want to ensure we have absorbance mode selected in the drop-down menu. We also need to select the path length. The SX20 allows the use of both a 2mm and a 10mm path length. The path length is selected according to the position of the light guide and the absorbance detector on the cell block. Consult the manual for details. To achieve the best signal to noise ratio, it is recommended that the absorbance in the cell does not exceed 0.8 absorbance units. Next, we need to measure a reference value for our absorbance measurement. That is, a signal that corresponds to zero absorbance or 100% transmission. To do this, we need to fill the cell with a background solution. This solution is usually water, buffer, or the reaction endpoint. Fill the drive syringes with your background solution and avoid introducing bubbles. Then set the drive valves to the drive position and click the drive button several times. This will push the old contents out of the cell and fill it with the background solution. Use the monochromator settings to select the desired wavelength and make sure the slits of the monochromator are set to appropriate setting. Typical settings for absorbance measurement are 0.5 millimeters for both entry and exit slits. Though as we shall see in a moment, it may be necessary to modify this depending on the amount of light that reaches the detector. For most experiments, we want the gain to be optimized automatically and we therefore tend to keep the auto HV button checked and then press reference. A high voltage that optimizes the recorded signal will automatically be set depending on the amount of light that is hitting the detector. If the high voltage is less than 200 volts, there is too much light and the slit setting should be decreased to reduce the light intensity to within the usable range. Nevertheless, a warning message will let you know if this is the case. Once the background has been successfully recorded, replace the solutions in the drive syringes with your reagent solutions, again making sure not to introduce bubbles. Set the drive valves to the drive position. On the spectrometer control panel, make sure that kinetics is selected in the sequencer and select external from the list in the trigger panel to activate the stop flow operation. On the time based panel, choose an appropriate acquisition time based on the expected time scale of the reaction. Enter a name for your results file in the file names dialog window. If you want to measure repeat drives, set the number of repeats to your desired value. The number of points should normally be set to a value between 400 and 1000. Once ensuring the drive valves are set to the drive position, click the drive button several times to flush the remaining background solution out of the cell. Finally, click Acquire to perform the stop flow experiment and acquire your data. Next, we shall focus on running a fluorescence experiment in which we are measuring light emitted perpendicular to the light from the monochromator. Emitted fluorescent light is of higher wavelength than the excitation source. 
We usually therefore place a long pass fill optical filter in front of the detector to block out its scattered excitation light. Use the spectrometer control panel to set the wavelength to your desired value. Fluorescence measurements generally require more light than do absorbance, so it is often necessary to increase the slit settings on the monochromator. Slit settings of 2mm and above are generally used for fluorescence experiments. Again, it is necessary to choose a path length. For fluorescence, it is generally recommended that a 2mm path length is used, as this minimises absorption effects that can distort the signal. This time we do not need to record a background, as the fluorescence is measured as a relative signal. However, we still need to set a high voltage on the detector so that our signal changes can be captured with an optimal signal to noise and within the dynamic range of the analog to digital converter. In general, if we expect the fluorescent signal to increase over time, it is sensible to set the high voltage with the cell containing the reaction endpoint. If we expect the signal to decrease, we typically set the high voltage with the cell containing the fluorescent reagent along with either a buffer or water. To fill the cell, load the drive syringes, again ensure bubbles aren't introduced, and set the drive valves to the drive position. Click the drive button several times to fill the cell, and click the button next to the fluorescence box on the detector high voltages panel, and click auto PM in the dialog box to set the high voltage. Once you have completed your experiments, flush the system through with distilled water by filling the syringes, setting the drive valves to the drive position, and clicking drive several times. The system can then be left indefinitely with distilled water in the flow circuitry. Also, shut down the software, switch off the electronics rack, and make sure you turn off the lamp. You may also want to switch off the gas supply at this point. And that concludes this tutorial. If you have any further questions, please feel free to contact our customer support team, and many thanks for watching.